Hey everybody, welcome to the Sassy Girl Entrepreneur Show. I have a very special guest with me today. We're gonna be talking about the three V's of your brand, value, voice, and visibility. Now, the guest that I have today, I met on Instagram and she is the bomb. I can't wait to introduce you to Natalie Gregg. She is a change agent, an adjunct professor, public speaker, and a tele television personality, right? I mean, this is awesome. But this woman really, she is all about women leadership and women empowering. And she hosts a Twitter chat Lead Lowly. That is so super cool. I can't wait for her to share this with you. So let me introduce Natalie to you. How are you, girl? I am great. So <laughs> excited about being here with you and your lovely audience. Thank you so much for the invitation. You are so welcome. Well, I had to have you on the show. I have been following you on Instagram. I don't know how long. I think we were actually connected. Was it through Lori Sika? Is it maybe Lori um, or uh, you could be correct. I'm not sure how we connected, but I've been following you on Instagram <laughs> for a minute as well. <laughs> I love it. I love that, you know, social media brings people together because that's really what yes. it should be about. Right. Right. And so much. It's people putting content out, wanting people to view their highlight reels, and then they walk away from it. They don't engage with anybody. They don't mm -hmm. use it as a social business tool. So I love that we've connected on Instagram and that I have you here. <laughs> Absolutely. And soon to have you on the Lead Loudly Twitter chat. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited about that too. So let's talk about Lead Loudly. What sure. is it? Lead Loudly is the battle cry for women to be bold, confident, and fearless. I love it. So it's a Twitter chat, right? So mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit more about that. Like, are you inspiring them through these chats? Like what's, what's, I get the foundation, but sure. what can they expect by joining in on that? Well, the Twitter chat is based around my three branding words, which is inspire, lead, and transform. And so actually most of my guests are women and there are women that are really killing the game in whatever industry that they're doing, you know, whether they're a stay at home mom, whether they're an entrepreneur, whether they're in the corporate arena, whatever it is. And I also have some very unique gentlemen that come on and talk about not necessarily the difference between male and female, but also give us some incredible tools in the area of branding, leadership, and entrepreneurship. I got to give a shout out to those men that do that because my audience, mm -hmm. like yours, is a women based audience, right? Yes. So 99% of my clients, well, probably 90% of my clients are women, right? And mm -hmm. probably more are my audience that are probably listening to this podcast right now. Sure. But I've had men on as well. And you've got to mm -hmm. love those men that are like, yeah, I know this is all about women, but I'm coming on. I'm embracing this. And I'm just rallying behind you guys and going to teach you as well and inspire you as well. Mm -hmm. And there's not that divide. So that's so cool. I love that. Be because I always say as a girl power feminist, you know, it's not us or them, it's us and them. Because most of the time, if we're negotiating any type of collaboration or any type of, you know, job or whatever it is, most of the time it's with a male counterpart. And so right. we need to learn how to play with them, how to negotiate, how to collaborate, how to partner, you know, all those things, you know, and most of my career, which is so ironic, was spent on the economic development side. And oh. 90 to 95 percent of everybody who I worked with was a man. Yeah. And so being fed up. And not seeing women in roles where I thought they should be in. And I said, okay, let's change this. I went to my first Chamber of Commerce meeting with my dad at five years old. And I was the only female in the room. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Because he had just been elected to the Chamber of Commerce. And he wanted me to have the experience at his first board meeting. And wow. I am sad to say, decades later, not much has changed. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, this was a board meeting or this was a yes. chamber event, a board this, meeting. This was a board meeting. He was just elected to the um, Marion um, 
we grew up in a small town near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and he was just elected to the board of directors. And uh, he wanted me to experience that with him. And um, I was five years old. And I remember just sitting in these huge chairs, kind of looking around the table around like, you know, why am I here? But then yeah. also looking at there was not one stiletto in the room. Wow. At all. At all. At all. And you noticed that at five. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I would think at five years old, I would probably be like antsy, swirling in my chair, like, why am I here? Get me out of here. But what what an amazing thing that your dad did for you at that moment. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Into that, that you probably at that time didn't, you know, it's probably more <laughs> of a pain in the butt to go with him, like a punishment, right? But oh, oh, absolutely. he's actually like really doing you some, doing a huge favor for you. Yeah, that is so true. And as I work with my students and my clients and my customers, you know, always talking about success, leaving clues. If you're truly operating in your passion, you really, excuse me, can look back to what you played as as a child. Mm. And it should have some type of mimic to each other. Oh my gosh. I love that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking about that recently too. Oh that, yes. You know, um, our behavior and our, our, the, our mindset, the, our beliefs, right. They were mm -hmm. formed like our parents and, and before them, their parents formed those behaviors and it's gotten passed down and we may not even realize it, you know, what we're saying or what we're doing, but we have formed these beliefs mm -hmm. and they have either empowered us to do certain things to find that success or they've been our roadblocks. That's true. That is so true. And, you know, and I'm glad you talk about that, you know, because I'm working with a coach right now as we're talking about mindset, you know, because being in corporate America and academia and now being an entrepreneur and all things flowing between the three seamlessly. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of things going on up there. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yes. There really is. There really is. So, so you were in economic development beforehand mm -hmm. yes. and you've made right from there. Did you make the transition into lead loudly and inspiring other women or was there something in between? Well, I've always trained and developed no matter where I was or what I was doing. If I was working for corporate America, I also worked for um, several foundation, community development foundations, also um, a school foundation. It was always about women's leadership because I wanted to be not necessarily the first female in the room, but I wanted to be in the room to challenge those <laughs> conversations and to make sure that we got other women involved, not only at the table, but involved as far as inclusion, diversity, and also equity, because it doesn't make any sense if we're included and we have diversity. It's all down to that economic, that green, that peace, that money, that yeah. where we need to be paid the same thing as our male counterparts if we have the same strengths and services. Absolutely. So did that mission, your mission for this, did that start as a five-year-old little girl or when did it really bloom that you're like, you know what, this is who I'm designed to be and this is what I'm passionate about? When did that happen? Well, I'll tell you a secret. All of my Barbie <laughs> dolls were female. <laughs> <laughs> no Ken doll. <laughs> no, not in my utopia. Not one Ken. <laughs> not one. And it was so funny. I had a, a baby Barbie and my grandmother used to tease me. She said, well, how do you get a baby Barbie and there's no Ken? And I used to tell her artificial insemination grandmother. Oh, no, you did. <laughs> <laughs> did she know what that was at the time? Yes. Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's what happens when you allow your kid to only watch Sesame Street in the news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical <laughs> so this really has been something within you from from a child yes it, it's always been my play yeah and I consider I consider it that way and you know just being inquisitive and you know having those courageous conversations as far as why are there no women representation Right. You know, why are you not doing this? Well, have you thought about this, you know, and those type of things, you yeah. know, and just really asking questions. And so 
when I launched the Lead Loudly Twitter chat, my goal was to see how deep I can ask the questions for different results. I like that. And I can't wait to hop on there and, and join you. I, I actually started um, on Twitter before. I mean, MySpace was first, right? But after, right. MySpace, <laughs> after MySpace, Twitter mm -hmm. was my first platform I used. And I always talk about that it was actually a Twitter chat where I met a, a group of mainly women, not all women, but mainly women that really educated me and taught me social media before social sure. media was really a business tool. And we are all still connected. Everybody in that Twitter chat, we're like, we oh, formed a friendship. And that was 11 years ago when that first oh, wow. started. Yes. So it's so cool. I have, I'll be honest, I have not been in a Twitter chat lately, mm -hmm. um, but I'm so excited about Lead Loudly. I absolutely am. But if anybody's listening and you've not been in a Twitter chat, mm -hmm. I will tell you, embrace it. It yes. first, it's going to feel like you are talking to yourself. Right. And it might be a little confusing to follow, but it give it five minutes yes. and you will get the flow <laughs> because that, there's that, so much value in those chats. That is so true. And the young lady that's going to be on tonight, um, Jen Hartman, she is the first female CMO for John Deere. Oh, you're kidding. Yes, she's oh on tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's awesome. I, mm -hmm. What do I have tonight? I might be on there. You might see me. I <laughs> certainly hope so. I better hop in there. I better mm -hmm. hop in there. But I we certainly hope so. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool. That's cool. I, I'm curious to hear her story. Uh, we're going to talk about the three V's, right? Sure. Of your brand. Absolutely. And when we are done with this, uh, hang tight because we've got special something special for everybody who's listening. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to share that too. But let's talk about these three V's, value, voice, and visibility. Just give me like an overview like about why those three are so important. Well, when I started looking at businesses and brands that really stand on in, that really make a difference in our lives, as well as their communities, these three things kept showing up. They had a very distinct voice. There was certain ways that they did things, you know, through their communications, through their through their social media, you know, those kinds of things. For you, for instance, you know, your brand voice is very sassy. <laughs> and and it, it's great because that's how we connect to you. Yeah. And so, you know, finding that voice and making sure that your personality can be exuded through that. You know, I love Twitter because Twitter plays like I plays. It is fast and it is furious. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> not to scare anyone away you yeah. know it's just you know how you decide that you want to use it but my my brand voice is very fast and furious and you know I talk all all the time about leading in stilettos and about lead louder you know those type of things it's all about women's empowerment but also inspiring women to become their own economic engine because it's going to eventually come down to that equity and also economics absolutely Absolutely. So let's talk about value. How, what is brand value? Brand value. What is your unique value? What is your differentiator? What do you bring to the table? You know, what do you dream about at night that you wish that was different? Or if you had all the money in the world that you could do it without even thinking about it? Yeah. Or what's that one thing to you is, is like breathing mm -hmm. that you can do it with your eyes closed. If someone wakes you up two 30 in the morning, you <laughs> automatically go into action. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Cause there are a few things that I know I could talk about all day long, unless you stop me. I can that is, going yes. going. <laughs> that is so true. One of my um, professors from Chapel Hill used to tease me. He said, you will take over an empty room. <laughs> and I said, yes, the room needs to be organized. He said, see my point exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. And, you know, that is so important. I mean, it's it's important for your business, like you were saying, too. Um, it's definitely you have to know what that that value is and where you bring value. Yes. But on a social media aspect, 
when I look at different profiles that mm -hmm. people's bios, they neglect to mention where they bring value. They say what they do, right? but they don't say where they bring value. And it's like a million people do what you do, right? That's true. That is so, so true. What makes you different? And, exactly. And so that, I, yeah, people, I agree with you. Value, where you bring the value is really important. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. talk about visibility next. Well, visibility goes into the know, like, and trust mm. piece. You know, before I give you my money, before I give you my time, before I give you any type of investment, I have to first know you. I have to first know who you are. Then I have to decide, do I like you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yeah. And last but not least, before the investment changes hands or bank accounts, I have to decide, do I trust you? Do mm -hmm. I trust you enough to make sure that you can help me with this transformation. Right. And that's where the conversion comes in between, you know, someone just lurking and then someone actually being a customer or a client. So you work with mainly women and you teach them how to improve that visibility. How to improve all three. All three, the value, yes. the voice and the visibility. Absolutely. So Last thing we're going to talk about is value. And I want to go a little bit deeper, right? Because mm -hmm. this is going to tie into the end because we have a special offer for everybody who is watching or listening. Yes. So I want to give them a little piece of what they can expect from you. Okay. Just a little piece because we just know a just a little, just a little. Yeah. We don't want to give it all away. Right. Okay. But we're absolutely. Going to talk about voice a little bit. Um, and I, I, explain to me first about your your brand's voice. What is that for everybody, anyone who's listening who may not really know what that voice is? Take a look at the three brands that you are inspired by. That's what I encourage my customers and my students to actually do. And that will give you some idea about their voice, about their personality. You know, are they sassy? Are they mysterious? Are they powerful? Yeah. You know, and you can, by looking at commercials, you can kind of tell what kind of brand voice, you know, they, they are, you know, do they, are they a trusted resource? Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about, you know, the brands that talk about being a trusted re resource, you know, some of the insurance brand, you know, like Allstate. Yeah. You know, when you think about some brands that have mystique, you think about, you know, some of the brands that only give you some a little bit of the information. And then you have to go further to find out if you are going to have that trust factor and make that transition. Because most of the time the trust factor actually leads to the transition where the sale happens. So if I wanted, if I didn't know if my, my brand's voice was on mm -hmm. point and right. I wanted to evaluate it, like, am I doing the right stuff or can I tweak it? How, like, what are some, what's some advice that you can tell me to see if it's on point with what, I'm hoping my brand is. Sure. You look at your engagement. There is so many powerful tools in the comments. If you actually yeah. look at what you're posting on social media and also the conversation that you're having and not being afraid to ask, you know, your top three clients, your top three trusted resources and said, you know, I want my brand to portray these three words. What do yeah. you think? What three words do you think about when you hear my name, when you hear my brand? Oh, I'd be curious and, to hear what people said about me. <laughs> and sit back and listen. And you can ask yeah. those things on social media as well. I might, that might have to be a post that I create. Oh, please do. Inspired so by you. Fun. Oh, yeah. To I'd love see, to. Um, I, I would be curious to hear what what people who follow me, what three words they think of sure. when they think of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. great. In fact, everybody who's listening, if you create that post, um, give us both the tag, tag both of Absolutely. us. In that. And because I would love to see what everybody, what their feedback is for everybody. So yeah, let us know. This would be fun. Oh, this would be absolutely. A fun little experiment. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, so for me, if, it's all about play. It's all about doing yeah. it in the moment and getting it done. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's just say hypothetically that people start saying what their words are, that those are three words that make them think of me. Yes. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's not my voice. Like I, you know, I didn't realize that that was what I was giving out. Like mm -hmm. I really want to do this, go this way. Like, so I need to probably change the things that I'm saying, but, but how do you do that? Like, how do you make that change? If you have to make, if you find out your brand voice is actually off point of what your goal is, or do you not change your brand voice because it's your brand? It's like, I don't know. How do you decide if you should change it or you keep it the same? Well, first of all, it depends upon what type of outcome that you're looking for. So either you're not aligned with your ideal audience or either something in your, your brand voice is a little off. Mm. And either either one of them we can tweak because your, van, your brand voice is going to align with your ideal audience. At least it should. And so, okay. you know, are there words that we need to start using? Are there certain type of phrases that we're start we're going to start using? Because it's so funny, even though lead loudly is a hashtag, I always say it's a verb and a call to action. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. How long ago did you start lead loudly? Well, maybe about seven years ago. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's been around a long time. Yes. Oh gosh. If you're listening, like go back and even watch the past lead loudly, like just put the hashtag in there in mm -hmm. Twitter and all everything with that hashtag will come up. Yes. But th that's awesome. That, I mean, that is really cool. Um, and I'm so, obviously I'm like, so curious about like, this lead loudly, but let's get back on track because I can take sure. another out. Right. Um, can you give me an example of somebody that maybe you worked with or, or maybe even yourself, right? Where um, their voice was totally off and, and what you had to do to change that. Well, you look at once again, what do you want your outcome to be? How do you want to, for lack of a better word, influence people? Because influence marketing is about how you influence your customers mm -hmm. and we all do it. Yes. And also, how do you influence your community? And community now is is such a critical asset to have, you know, as part of your portfolio, whether you're participating in a community or whether you're building a community independently yourself. I'm building the community independently myself through the Lead Loudly hashtag. And it stands for, for women to be bold, confident, and fearless. And how I do that is through inspiring them through the leadership tools that um, I give through the chat by bringing on some incredible women across the globe that are doing some amazing things in their business, in their corporate lives, as well as their families. And also some men who are our allies and who have partnered with us to form strategic partners and collaboration so we can continue to grow and so we can diminish the issues that we have with equity. I love that. And that all stemmed from your economic development, right? I mean, a lot of that stuff. What did yes. you see during that time that really impacted you? I mean, was it just, was it not just, I don't want to play that lightly. No, not at all. But was it that um, women made less than men consistently or was it, um, you know, what did you see that you're like, this needs to change? Well, when you kind of start experiencing the things and I know you have as well in corporate America, you know, as a female, you know, I had one of my, my actual board members tell me when I was negotiating my salary for a nonprofit that I need, I did not need to make as much as my male counterparts because I was not head of household. Oh, Wow. Yeah. Sometimes the, when people make those comments, yes. Um, you know, I had, I had somebody once. it wasn't because I was a woman, ironically. Um, but my ex-husband was Hispanic, right? So my mm -hmm. last name at the time was Hispanic right. and I got a job. It was right out of college and I got a job working for a company and a woman said to me, the only reason you got the job is because you're a minority. And I'm like, 
no, I have a degree. Do you have a degree? And she's like, well, no. I'm like, no, there's probably more to it than my last name. Sure. But that was like a sucker punch, right? The same kind oh, of sucker absolutely. punch that you just got. It's like, whoa, what? Like, <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Like, why okay. are we thinking? Why do we think of each other in this closed space? Like, right. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's that needs to change a among a lot of different spectrums. That needs to change. And sometimes we're our own worst enemy because it happens in private a lot of times with women, but we don't talk about it. Yes. So I'm determined to let's get this on the playing field. Let's have courageous conversations around what's happening and what do we need to do differently to support each other. So what is something we can do differently to support each other? To have these conversations, like conversations. To exactly, to understand when these things happen, to learn how to negotiate, to yeah. actually have, you know, a group of allies, you know, not necessarily customers, but also as an entrepreneur, yeah. to have a group of allies that, that promote you, but also support you as well. So when yeah. those things happen, you can automatically go into your process that you don't have to think about it, that, you know, it's already there. You know, the issues with queen bee syndrome, I had that happen to me as well from actually one of my favorite mentors. Oh, that really? all of, yes. That all of a sudden we actually did this collaboration with one of my college presidents and my mentor told me, she said, well, I don't want to bring you on as an associate you're really qualified for my job. <laughs> and I was like, well, but I'm not interested in your job. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I went to my male advisor and he said, Daphne, you don't understand what's going on. I was like, I have no clue. He said, you're experiencing queen, queen bee syndrome. She's saying there's only room at the table for one female and she's it. Wow. And now you are a threat. You know, I don't think I've ever heard of queen bean syndrome, mm -hmm. but I've experienced it. Yes. <laughs> and you know, mm -hmm. and, and ladies, if you are listening, like we need to stop that, you know, we, exactly. we really need to stop looking at each other as competition mm -hmm. and lift each other up. And right. I don't know why we, Yes, I do. We get catty because we live in a mindset of scarcity and not abundance. Sure. So we think Ooh. that if one is there, I'm like, wait, I do know why we do that. Yes. <laughs> right. So we think if somebody else is rising to the top, they're going to take space from us. Right. And that's not the case. We bring each other up. So mm -hmm. we need to continue lifting each other. Yes. Cause I had that conversation with one of my male advisors and I was saying to him, I said, what happens when you get a new assignment from my president? And I said, wait a minute, let me tell you what happens. You go tell all your male counterparts that you have this new assignment and they jump on board. He said, absolutely. I said, there's your difference. <laughs> You're right. And his, his mouth just hung open. I said, there's your difference. Yep. That's, mm -hmm. that's the difference. So ladies, we need to change. We need to lead loudly and we need to make a change. So. Absolutely. But I have a very special offer. Actually, I don't have the offer. Uh, Natalie has it. And she is offering this to everybody who is listening right now yes. on this podcast. Absolutely. So we talked about the three V's of your brand, value, voice, and visibility. And if you are ready to find your three V's and you're ready to take some action mm -hmm. on this next chapter, Miss Greg is offering a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with her so that you can catapult your personal brand. This is so exciting. So normally this is two ninety seven, dollars And to work with her for an hour, she will work with you um, to learn what those three Vs are. And you're going to get a, actually a 30-day action plan. So this isn't just an hour conversation and you're done. She's going to give you steps and an action plan yes. that you can implement so that you can take your personal brand to a new level. But for everybody listening right now, it's only $97. And she is limiting it to the first 10 people who register. So 
in the comments, if you are listening to this, I would not wait. I wouldn't pause. I wouldn't debate it. Mm -hmm. This is something for only $97, you can really understand your brand. And here's the thing, knowing your brand is so important. Yes. It is the most important thing, right? All the other mm -hmm. stuff that people will talk about are things that you need to do, right? You need to do social media. You need to have a website. You need to have an email campaign. All yes. those things are important. But if right. you don't know your brand, none of those things matter. That is so, so true. <laughs> so you, this is, if you're thinking of starting business, if you have already started your business, but you're like, I'm not really sure if... I'm not sure what my brand really is. I'm kind of confused. I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really, I need it better to find. We just got you the hookup. So <laughs> we just got I you, love you a total <laughs> hookup. So in the, in the notes, if you are listening to this on the podcast, just click the link, head over to the notes section and you will be able to see how to sign up for this. If you're on my blog, it's right below as well as on YouTube. Check it out. So you can find the link to be part of this anywhere. But again, only the first 10 people is she going to send this to. I had to twist her arm for this guy. So <laughs> make it worth your while. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You were very gracious to offer that to everybody. So, but well, I'm I, so excited. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, I my pleasure. loved talking to you and I love everything that you brought to the table and you. how you have just really inspired. And I love what your mission is for women and how you are leading loudly. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It was such a pleasure and delight. And I am so excited about having you on the Lead Loudly Twitter chat. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll catch you all next week. <laughs> Bye.